Peyton Thorne breaks down the scrimmage, and he has a lot to say. In the world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the bug, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off, and you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Five. Yes, sir. We're back. It's another episode of the Top Button Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Rush, a.k.a. Charlie Five, uh, and a special uh, guest tonight, a little Taylor Tuesday. Taylor Korn from the next round is going to join us. Maybe this becomes a uh, more permanent thing, but we are going to dive into a lot of player press conferences that, that happened today, and Peyton Thorne had a ton to say, uh, really opened our eyes as far as what was going on last year, several questions that we have we'd love to have answered about what we were thinking. But before we get started, we got to give a shout out to our boy uh, Ford Stokes with Active Wealth Management, powered by uh, I'm sorry, retirement results powered by Active Wealth Management. Look, you got to reach out to Ford. He's an Auburn guy. Why, who would you trust more to tr with your money than an Auburn guy? If you got an Alabama financial advisor, your money could be going to Alabama's NIL. So give give Ford a shout. Check him out at retirementresults.com forward slash plan. He'd love to meet you. Uh, love to be uh, make a friend at the same time. So Ford Stokes Active Wealth Management. Taylor had some press conferences today. Peyton Thorne. Uh, he, I think he even he didn't even really he kind of tiptoed around a little bit. Then he just do dove right in, and it wasn't super, uh, not a lot of coach speak. He he just kind of let it all out. And I think one of the biggest things that's most exciting, I guess, or, or the big one of the bigger talking points was how how much he's acknowledging how many weapons he actually has to deal with, and how much more options that gives you in this offense versus how limited work he was uh, last year. Uh, what was your biggest takeaway? Like, what was something that kind of really jumped out as far as that whole conversation? That whole conversation went. I feel like one of the biggest questions this off season has been around the wide receivers. Obviously, there are some veteran guys, some transfers, but a lot of the noise and a lot of the excitement is around the four young guys that are coming in. And something that stood out to me personally a lot was. I think it was towards the end of his time with the media. He said that, you know, you have to give these guys some grace because a year ago they were pay they were playing high school football. Right. So yes, they're extremely talented, but at the end of the day, there are going to be times when they look their age, but he said, and he said, Perry, he gave Perry a, some praise and he said within two to three weeks, cause you know, he got there a little bit later than Cam and some of the others. But he said within two to three weeks, Perry was seemed to have fixed a lot of the big, you know, mistakes that he was making. He was adjusting well. But he said, Cam Coleman has only made the mistakes that you would think, okay, yeah, that guy's young. He said one or two times. So that answers questions or I guess makes me feel a little better about the situation because obviously we know they're talented, but it's always going to be a question of how well will their game translate from high school to college football. So that made me feel confident, even more confident than I did in expecting improvement on the offensive side of the ball this season. Absolutely. I mean, look, you can feel it when Peyton talks about the, these offensive weapons, uh, and he talked about it a lot. Uh, you know, you can only do so much. They had some good players last year. You had a Rivaldo Fairweather. You had Jarquez Hunter. And Jarquez Hunter averaged, you know, close to six yards a carry, maybe even over six yards a carry. I got to look at it uh, with with little to no help in, in the passing game. So if you can do what you did last year with those guys, imagine now uh, adding in these weapons that are that are not only showing up just in, you know, in shirts and, and shorts. Now you, you saw Saturday they're starting to show up with shoulder pads. Uh, and helmets. So uh, you could you could see Peyton's eyes light up a little bit, I think, when he started talking about, you know, you can only do so much as a quarterback. You can only do so much uh, when you're limited, especially on the outside, when you're limited at that wide receiver position to be able to stretch the field. Uh, it condenses everything. And then now you got it just makes it feels like you're playing against 15 guys on defense. So uh, to hear him go ahead and just give those guys praise, uh, I think, speaks a lot for the quarterback. But I think it speaks a lot uh, for what what those guys have brought to the brought to the game. Uh, 
bring into this offense already. And he mentioned, I'm pretty sure that he was talking about Rivaldo Fairweather saying we were put in a lot of positions where he was being double teamed and yeah. they could do that and they were safe because how many weapons did Auburn have offensively last right. season? Not many. Right. So he said now, you know, they can, they can double team Rivaldo Fairweather, but they're then leaving a very dangerous player open, which is something that, you know, wasn't necessarily a concern in the past. If you're, a, if you're an opposing defender or a, a, depo, a opposing defensive coach, who do, you, who do you take out of the game? Like right now, like who do you feel comfortable taking out of the game? Like do, is it, is it do, I, do, I, do I neutralize Rivaldo? Do I take Cam out? Do I take, uh, do I take Keandre Lambert-Smith? Like, who, like which one do you pick? Like which one do you pick that, that you feel like is going to limit uh, – you're not going to get killed by the other? Like I, I don't know. It would be a tough choice. And I think, I mean, at the beginning of the season, maybe limit the the veteran guys and, you know, give the young guys a test and say, yeah. okay, here you are. This is the big stage. But after those first, you know, they're going to be playing at home five games in a row. After those yeah. first couple of home games, my hope is that that instills confidence in all of the younger guys. Hopefully they make a big, a few big plays and they're like, okay, I can do this. They get more comfortable. And then it's like, Pick your poison, you know, take yeah. one of them out of the game, but we got, you know, we got other guys over here that will make a play if they need to. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so yeah, uh, let's let the freshmen try to beat us. Maybe let's let the freshmen try to beat us early, but Hey, if that's the case, then by game four and five, those freshmen aren't really going to technically, they're not going to be playing like freshmen anymore. They're going to have the experience that they're going to be playing more like, uh, you know, more like sophomores and things like that. So, uh, regardless of uh, of how you feel about how last year went, it's pretty easy to see the excitement uh, these guys have about lo a lot of these offensive skill pieces. It's an element of the game uh, that uh, you just didn't have last year. I think you can feel it also in Hughes' voice uh, when he talks about there was an, a tweet that went out from Auburn's account, and it was like you know, the culture's better, the roster's better, and it's all like a quote from Hugh Freeze, the culture's better, the roster's better. And then there's like four or five things, and he basically just said, I love where we are right now. I love where this team is right now. Uh, and you could feel that a lot in Peyton's voice. Uh, one thing he said, Taylor, I, I'm, I'm mad. I'm so mad right now uh, that he's, uh, about something that he said. Like, I think there's a serious discussion that needs to be had. Um, one thing he talked about was last year, he would not be able to uh, – he did not have the freedom to check plays at the line. So – if a, a play call came in, the check had to either A, come from the sideline, or B, he had to run the play that he was given. So he could look at the field and, and realize, hey, this play's not going to work. And he had no freedom whatsoever to change that play. And he talked about how that's what he's good at, and he and Freeze and Nix and Kent Austin are all on the same page so to be able to think the same way and see the same things and then be able to check out of it, that alone, uh, that alone should uh, yield better results on offense. So I got I mean, I really got to ask this. Should should we be thinking about prison time for Philip Montgomery? I mean, should prison time, prison time be on the table? I think there has to be some sort of felony that that was there was some sort of felony that was uh, that happened here last year. I can't figure out what it is, and I don't know the law in the book, but something illegal went down. Well, my my initial thought is, imagine how much that depletes the confidence of a quarterback. Yeah. And one, you obviously don't trust me to make a good decision, or you don't trust that I have enough. You think that I have this one guy that can make a play, and you know, there's no faith in in the other guys on the field. And then, B, imagine how demoralizing it feels to be standing there you know, and like looking, looking ahead of you thinking it's not going to work, but I got to do it. You know, at yeah. that point, I'm just, I would be like, screw this, screw this. I'm calling a timeout. Like, <laughs> right, right. Like, I don't even want to do this because I know yeah. it's not going to work. And that's what I, I mean, the lack of confidence that that must make you feel, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. One of the one of the criticisms of Peyton has been that he's hesitant or like last year he was hesitant to pull the trigger or, or whatnot. Like, 
I think I'd be hesitating too if I have no faith in the play that's called. Like it's like, man, I don't know what's about to happen. There is, there's no way I, I can see the coverage right now. I'm looking over here begging for a check. Like, please check this play. Uh, I know that the play you're called is going to be covered. So I'm I got to wait for for the guy to get open. Or I'm going to throw an interception. Uh, I, I, I'm blown away that at this level of college football, that there are offenses that don't allow the freedom for the quarterback to, Hey, I tell you what, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, we got a run play and they're, they're line, they're stacked up on the line and, and I'm going to be running. It's going to be a two yard loss. We're going to be running right into them. Let's change it and do like a little quick pass out to, I mean, just get it out, uh, spread, spread them out a little bit. No, we can't do, we can't do that. Now that's not to say that, the coaches don't sit, weren't seeing that and calling some checks uh, from the sideline, but still, you're not thinking this. Like, there's no synergy there about seeing the same things and, and checking into the right stuff. It's just literally, I'm just a robot. You call a play, I got to execute the play. You don't like the play you call based off the defense. I got to look over to the sideline. You give me the check, and then I call it. I, I mean, I, I can't m- imagine in the SEC, uh, in college football, in 2020, at that point in time, 2023, we don't have offenses that aren't malleable at the line of scrimmage where the, where the quarterback uh, has the option to che- uh, check. I, I'm telling you, I think it's illegal. I think it has to be, uh, it has to be illegal. Well, I have, I have two, two thoughts on this. So one, when I'm going to make a decision and it seems like it's going to be a hard decision, I'll make a pro con list. I'm like, let's make this simple. <laughs> let's put the pros on one side of the paper. Let's yeah. put the cons on the other side. And then hopefully it'll be obvious. Is there one pro, is there one bullet point that you would have put under the pro column of this list in this scenario? Because obviously it didn't work. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know what, does it, does anyone look at successful programs? Who's doing that? I can't, I can't think of one. I mean, think about it. I don't remember where Philip Montgomery was. I I don't know if he was an on the field offensive coordinator or or if he was in the booth, but let's, I think at times he was in the booth. So let's think about this. Okay. So number one, he's signaling, signaling a play down to someone on the sideline who is then calling it in to, to Peyton. Okay. Then if he calls a check, he has to call it back from the from the uh, from the press box down to the sideline and then signal it out uh, to Peyton. And if you remember, there were times last year where we couldn't get a playoff. There were times where we we would struggle getting a getting a play in because we're making checks that way versus Peyton. Hey, you want to run tempo? You want to run fast? Hey, the quarterback's got to be able to make some adjustment adjustments. The quarterback's got to be able to make some calls uh, on the fly. Like I, I am. I'm appalled. I'm appalled. I, I, I'm I'm angry, uh, and I, I just can't believe that I <laughs> I want to try to put last year behind us. And, and after this show, it, last year's going to be behind me. But Pe- I'm blame Peyton. He brought it up, and, and I'm fired up about it. Well, that's also something that I think, and I think that we talked about this last time I came on with you was everyone saying you'll have these great receivers, but where's your quarterback? But if you actually look at what was going on behind the scenes and look, dig deeper than than what you see on the field, some of that's out of his control. Sure. So some of the situations that he put in that he was put in may not have been the best, but he's, you know, at that point, what can he do? Right. So now and he said over and over today how he feels like he Hugh Freeze, Ken Austin, he said, we are on the same page. On Everyone's the same, on yes. the same page. We're seeing and, the same things. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I'm like, you can't, like, yes, there were some things that he probably could have done differently, as all of us could. No one's perfect. But at the same time, it's like, you want your players to be put in the best position to succeed. And it does not seem like that was the case for him last season. Not at all. Not at all. And I don't want to make this sound like Peyton was like, hey, let me tell you all the things that were wrong last year. These were specific questions he was asked. He was asked about uh, what it's like to have more uh, offensive weapons. He was asked uh, about the freedom to make checks at the line. Uh, And then the last thing he one of the last points that he was asked that I think was very interesting, that's something that's uh, not rated high and not not given enough um, not given enough talk is he was asked, what's the impact of having. Uh, Kent Austin be able to coach you one on one. So last year, uh, if you remember, Kent Austin was an off the field coach. He's an on the field coach now, but last year he was an off the field coach. And 
off the field coaches could not coach directly uh, with players. You could maybe do some film stuff, but in practice uh, and, and on, in the games, there was no communication. That that was not something that that it was allowed. Well, this year, uh, this year Kent Ost- Kent Austin is the quarterback coach. He's able to have those one on one times and, and sort of really lock into Peyton. And you can tell from Peyton talking about it. Uh, that it means it means a lot. It helps a lot, and I think it speeds up that uh, it speeds up that uh, let's all be on the same page. Let's be all in sync, seeing the same things. I think that is very very underrated. Uh, Kent Austin being able to be an on the field one on one coach now with Peyton. I think that is also going to be uh, yield big dividends. Headsets. Think about think about uh, headsets now, and Kent being able to communicate, or whoever being able to communicate with Peyton before the snap. I think that's big. Uh, just being able to have communication with your actual quarterback coach that kind of seems like a big deal. I have, and this is kind of going back to takeaways from things that he said, and this is this touches on the scrimmage on Saturday, but he one of the first things that he mentioned today after practice was that he and he kind of spoke for the entire offensive side of the ball he said we were very frustrated walking off the field after the scrimmage because we felt like that was you know not anywhere close to the best that we've looked during uh fall camp and i or you were there so i'll ask you but from everything that i read it didn't seem like anyone thought that the offense looked atrocious by any means. Sure. Yeah. There were some things that probably could have gone better, but in my eyes, even that in itself makes me again, feel a little bit of an increase in confidence because it's like, if no one was sounding the alarm about how they looked and he basically seemed like they were pretty be- uh, beat up walking off the field after afterwards. So I'm like, they have high hopes for themselves. Sure. And, you know, him having on the field communication, one-on-one communication with the quarterback coach, I'm sure plays a role in that. But I'm like, they have high expectations for themselves. For sure. But- great. Yeah, absolutely. So that clearly they've won their sh- fair share of battles. Uh, and, and there was some time, there was some issues. There was some clunkiness at times and uh, there, it was, I couldn't really tell. Uh, I, I said that I, it felt like they were really trying to play it safe. Uh, I felt I kind of felt that, and you know, didn't really want to push it downfield to Cam, at risk a turned ankle or something like that. They're really trying to keep it underneath. Really, only took two deep shots, and both of them, honestly, one of them was a touchdown, and the other was a toe tap on the sideline that just so happened to be a, a fraction out to Cam Coleman. But I'm like you, uh, I, I didn't leave that scrimmage feeling like, other than honestly, running the ball was a little seemed a little bit. Uh, to, to struggle at times, but I didn't really leave that scrimmage feeling that the offense is just dreadful and, and there's going to be a lot of issues. Uh, but to hear the standard that they've kind of set for themselves, hey, we have a standard with, that we expect to go out and play, and, and that wasn't it. And, and if that's not it, uh, then what is like the 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 is the sky's the limit, I guess. Uh, so that I'm, I'm with you. That that was very exciting. Uh, one another thing he said that I, I've never really thought of. He goes, you know, uh, you expect to come out and, and, and practice and, and put up points. He's like, but you got to think about we're not game planning for the defense. We're just running play. Like we're practicing. Those are practice where we're running play. So we're not like picking on defenders. We're not game like watching film to break down uh, tendencies like we're, we're going to be against Alabama and A&M and then Cal and then Arkansas. Like, it's not like you're watching game film. You're just going out and practicing. And we're running some of the plays that uh, – that new plays that we're working on and things like that. But still, even 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 that, there is a standard clearly that they're expecting. And, and, and typically you don't expect a standard unless you've seen it. Like you've had, you've actually experienced that standard. So clearly, they're able to make some stuff happen uh, against this defense. And they felt like they uh, came up a little bit short. But I'm with you. Uh, that gets me fired up. That's okay. So I was looking at just stats from last year, out sure. of curiosity. I was refreshing my refreshing my mind. Are the fact that Peyton Thorne was so Jarquez Hunter obviously was the leading rusher. The fact that Peyton Thorne was. Number two on that list is yeah, and then there was a about a two hundred yard gap before right. before you hit Demari Austin. 
But going back to something that you said a little bit earlier, talking about, you know, the run game might not have looked super strong. If this was 365 days ago and you said that, I would say, oh, dear God, what are we going to do on offense if right, Dark right. Hunter can't run the ball? But now I'm like, you know, okay, again, it's a scrimmage. They're not game planning for the Auburn defense. They're they're trying to, you know, get get things where they need to get on the offensive side of the ball. They're focused on fine-tuning what they need to fine-tune. But now it's like, I feel, I would feel okay. If Jarquez Hunter has a bad day, you got we options. have options. We yes. have options, which you got, praise the I mean, Lord, because <laughs> I mean. Yeah, last year was pretty crazy. brutal. Yeah, yes. last year, if you had to slit through that again, uh, it'd be pretty brutal. So uh, I think there's a lot to take away from the scrimmage, a lot. If, I think you can ch check out Peyton's full press conference uh, in a number of different places. I think you post, uh, it's possibly on maybe the next round's uh, YouTube page. But you, regardless, don't take our word for it. Check it out. Listen to his press conference. Listen to his voice. Listen to uh, what he had to say about it. Uh, I think you'll uh, I think you'll glean as much information uh, as we did too. Taylor, I really appreciate you jumping on with me on a Taylor Tuesday. Hopefully we can make this a thing. Uh, where can people find you, follow you, love you, tell you, uh, uh, follow everything you do? So the next round is where I spend the majority of my time. So follow the next round. My Twitter is TaylorCorn, TNR. And then I also do a little mailbag weekly. I've been doing some Auburn interviews throughout the off season whenever an opportunity presents itself on my YouTube channel, which is called Uncorked. Yep. And then hopefully I'll be around here on the barn every now and then throughout the season. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, the underscore Charlie underscore five or every single day uh, on the top button podcast. Or if you want to jump in the message board, the barn Auburn.com $1 entry for a month. Uh, check it out. See if you like it. We're dropping nuggets. We're, we're taught having conversations about the quarterbacks, quarterback recruiting, offensive line recruiting, all of it. You can jump in there and have a lot of fun uh, as well. But we're going to get out of here. And we're going to get back tomorrow with uh, with another episode of the Top Button Podcast and a just stay button. Thanks for listening and drive home safely.